Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we were uh, doing uh, the piecewise uh, interpolation. Okay. And uh, uh, we have uh, completed so far uh, the piecewise uh, till here uh, interpolating polynomial and uh, piecewise quadratic interpolating polynomial. <coughs> right. Now uh, next we are going to look at the piecewise. Uh, uh, cubic interpolating polynomial. So before going there, uh, so I uh, first wish to uh, define a cubic Hermite interpolation. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to uh, look at now uh, to define a cubic a Hermite. interpolation <coughs> okay so it uses the idea of uh, 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 the newtons only okay and uh, <coughs> what is here aim is or what is your goal is uh, uh, we have a real value function uh, f a b from a b to r which we want to interpolate and the very first requirement is uh, that it is f is differentiable <clears throat> so our aim is uh, to find or uh, to find a, a, an interpolating polynomial p3 p3 where a degree of uh, this p3 is uh, less than equals to 3 such that it not only interpolate the function value at a and b so p3 of a is equals to f of a <coughs> and uh, p3 at b is equals to f of b so it so such that this happens in addition to it it also interpolate the values at the derivatives value <coughs> at its derivatives so earlier we were uh, available with the data where the uh, corresponding you can say nodal points are known and the, uh, the function value at those points or ordinates are known and then we try to determine the interpolating polynomial based on the given data <coughs> now suppose in addition if you have the values at uh, if you know the values at the derivative okay and you wish to interpolate the polynomial uh, interpolate the given function not only at the nodal points when the other value is at the point but also at the derivatives as well <coughs> okay now previously when you uh, try to uh, find the polynomial of degree 3 you require uh, points like x0 x1 x2 x3 <clears throat> so they are distinct that we have uh, for uh, showing the existence and uniqueness of interpolating polynomial we have uh, they are made the assumptions that uh, that x0 x1 x2 x3 are or, or these are distinct points okay moreover <clears throat> if you the, the proof will be same if they uh, means like x0 equals to x1 x1 uh, X, so they are repeated somehow okay and you have some condition in addition that f is differentiable and uh, additionally some assumptions are there so we are going to prove the now uh, we are going to establish the existence here okay and we are only looking for now cubic harmonic interpolation okay and when you if you recall in the case of distinct uh, nodal points if you recall what was the polynomial is is in the case when uh, x0 to x3 are uh, distinct points okay so when you have this uh, 
x0, comma, x1, comma, x2, comma, x3 are distinct. And if you recall that, then the polynomial, uh, the interpolating polynomial was f at x0 plus first divided difference x0, comma, x1 times x minus x0 plus second divided difference f of x0 comma x1 comma 2 into x minus x0 into x minus x1 plus the uh, third divided difference x0 comma x1 comma x2 comma x3 times x minus x0 into x minus x1 into x minus x2. Okay, so now what we are going to now deal with the case when x0 equals to x1 and x2 equals to x3. So, and then we will show the existence of interpolating polynomial and we also prove the unique, prove its uniqueness. So, we are going to look at the case when x0 equals to x1 is equals to a and x2 equals to x3 equals to b. Okay. Then, and since we have also assumed that f is differentiable. So, we have made the assumption that f is differentiable. So, how the table looks like is, if you, <coughs> x0, x1, x2, x3. So, a, a, b, b the values are f at a f at a f at b f at b so first divided difference so first divided difference how will we fix here so this is very clear so for this using these two f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a that is very clear that f a the first divided difference of this <clears throat> but when you have f of a minus f of a divided by a minus a in determinate form, but since f is differentiable, how will you evaluate is in the limiting sense, limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a divided by a plus h minus a. So, this is how you will define and that is going to be fixed as f dash of a. Okay, so that makes sense to replace f a a by f dash of a. And similarly here, so f dash at b, that is f b comma b. Now, similarly, for the second divided difference, if you have, so this is going to be uh, using these two and in notation, what it will be, it uses a, a and b and that is equals to f of a b. If you use the definition f of divide by b minus a. So f of a comma a is f dash of a. And if you use these two, this is f a b b. That is equals to f of b comma b minus f of a comma b divided by b minus a. <coughs> Then you can write the last here, last divided difference, which is here is f a a b b, and that is equals to f of a b b minus f a a b divided by b minus a. So once you have the divided difference you can now write the interpolating polynomial okay so if you uh, go for using this write the function value first divided difference second divided difference then third divided difference. so uh, yeah right yeah using this you can write the interpolating polynomial which is given by we are just follow the same thing so it is equals to f of a plus 
above a comma a time x minus a which we have replaced by f dash of a right because f is differentiable and f derivative at a is known now the next term is f a a b x minus a into x minus a that is x minus a square plus f a a b and b that into x minus a into x minus a into x minus b so that is x minus a square into x minus b. so like we have dealt with in the in case of Newton's interpolating polynomial right so this is equals to it is uh, uh, just so replace it by f dash of a it makes sense here since f is differentiable you can replace this f of a minus f of a divided by a minus a by a limiting sense that is going to be f dash of a. right so you have the uh, you have the this is this is called uh, this is a uh, this is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3 okay and now what we need to verify so far we have not verified the interpolating condition so the first condition is p3 at a must be equals to f at a equals to a so this term zero this term is also zero this term is also zero so p3 at a is f of a that's very clear p3 at b is equals to what is f of a plus f dash of a time b minus a so the last term will not contribute anything because b minus b is zero so plus uh, b minus a whole square time f a a b right so f of a comma a comma b time b minus a whole square now open it okay so open this uh, divided difference so this is equals to f of a plus f dash of a time b minus a plus what is the f of a a b is f of a b minus f a a that is f dash of a divided by b minus a time b minus a whole square So one b minus a get cancelled. Now minus f dash of a times b minus a will get cancelled with this. Now what you will have is f of a plus plus f of a b times b minus a. Now, upon this f of a b is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So, if you simplify it, that is going to be f of a. So, second interpolating condition also verified. Now, what is the third interpolating condition is that the derivatives also does match. Okay. So, if I go with the derivative here. So, what is p3 is equals to f of a plus x minus a time f dash of a plus f a a b x minus a whole square plus f a a b b time x minus a whole square time x minus b now but we uh, perform that derivative so p3 dash of x is equals to so first derivative this term zero so you have f dash of a plus time x minus a time f a a b plus the last term f a comma a comma b comma b time the so product uh, so you can use uh, here is so a 2 times x minus a into x minus b 
प्लस एक्स माइनस ए होल स्केयर नाउ वॉट यू नीड्स टू फाइंड इज पी थ्री डैश ऑफ ए स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड एफ डैश ऑफ ए अदर टर्म विल नॉट कॉन्फिगर बिकॉज यू हैव एक्स माइनस ए इन ईच टर्म सो एक्स माइनस ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो एट एक्स इक्वल टू Similarly, P3 dash at B. If you try to find, so you simplify it. What you will get is F dash at B. So if you are just going with this uh, two times B minus A. So I just write the simplified form of this. So F of A B minus F dash of A divided by B minus A. That's a second term plus the third term is here is f of a comma b comma b minus f a comma a comma b divided by b minus a. So when x equals to b, this will this does this term will not contribute anything. So only term is b minus a whole square. Okay, so one b minus a will get cancelled. If you simplify, so this b minus a will also get cancelled. Okay, and if you simplify it, so that is equals to f dash of a plus two time. So, ah uh, yes, ah uh, so minus two time f dash of a will be coming here. So that is going to be minus f dash of a. Plus two times f of a b, so f of a b is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, right. Now you simplify this term here. Plus b minus a is there. Okay, and what about this here? In this here is f of a comma b comma b. If it is, if you replace f of A comma B, uh, A comma A B comma B, so that is F dash of B. Okay, so that is F dash of B. So if I simplify it, this is F dash of B minus F A B divided by B minus A minus the this term is F A B. Minus f a a that is f dash of a divided by b minus a. Now this b minus a will get cancelled. Minus f a b minus f a b that will be minus two times f a b that is going to be cancelled with this here. That I can see for strike off. And what you will have is f dash of b plus f dash of a. So this will get cancelled with here. So what you will have is Simplify it f dash of a. So all the interpolating conditions are satisfied. This is an interpolating polynomial of degree less than or equal to three. Now we need to learn the uniqueness of this. Case. Okay. So this result uniqueness also is going to be proved in the by using the fundamental theorem of algebra. So so for uniqueness. So for uniqueness, if you have, uh, uh, if you want to prove, so let P three and Q three are two uh, cubic right interpolating polynomials. Okay, uh, such uh, such that P three at A is equals to F at A. That is equals to Q three at A. P three at B is equals to F at B is equals to Q three at B. And P three dash at A is equals to F dash at A is equals to Q three dash at A. And P three dash at B is equals to F dash at B plus Q three dash at B is equals to this. 
Now you define, I'm just going to define a polynomial R3 by just P3 minus Q3. And then note that degree of R3 will be less than equals to 3. Because sum of two uh, cubic polynomial is or difference of two cubic uh, polynomials are, is again going to be the polynomial of degree at most three. Also, R3 has roots A, A, B, and B. So you can say this R3 of A is equals to P3 of A minus Q3 of A, but these are matches. So that is a one A is a one time root. Then R3 dash at A is equals to P3 dash at A minus Q3 dash at A. But then again, those values matches. So A is a double root of R3. Similarly, B is also a double root of R3. So R3 has four roots. And R3 is a polynomial degree at most three. So, which is only possible when R3 is a zero degree polynomial. Okay, so when R3 is a zero polynomial, so this is only possible, which is only possible R3 equals to zero. So, this so P3 is equals to Q. Okay, now what we not need to see now next, we know the existence and uniqueness, then we can, we want to see the error. Okay, so now similar, similar uh, uh, way you have to proceed, like you have uh, uh, error in uh, uh, interpolating polynomial. So, applying Rho's theorem. So, you apply Rho's theorem there, okay, multiple times. And then get the error term in uh, in the interpolating polynomial in terms of divided difference as well as if the function is smooth enough means like n plus one time differentiable uh, then you have the in terms of derivative. So similarly you can uh, go with the application of Rho's theorem and you can show that so error in cubic hermite interpolating polynomial given by f of x minus p3 of x is equals to f of a a b b x time x minus a into x minus a that is x minus a whole square time x minus b into x minus b that is x minus b whole square this is the error term in cubic hermite interpolating polynomial. So earlier we were having x0, x1, x2, x3. So x minus x0 into x minus x1 into x minus x2 into x minus x3. So but x0 and x1 are equal, x2 and x3 are equal. So you will get the squared here. And if you assume that this is four time differentiable, the function is four time differentiable. So that will be given by so f fourth derivative at cx to so some point okay to some point between the interval x naught to xn okay so a to b it certainly depends on x okay such that this is happening okay by again applying the mean value theorem here so by four factorial time x minus a square time x minus b four Now you can bound this, okay? So now for bounding, again, you will follow the same what we have followed in during the classes for interpolating polynomials. So infinity, uh, a norm with infinity norm, that is going to be less than equals to fourth derivative with infinity norm, divided by four factorial, maximum of x below to close it time part of x minus a whole square time x minus b whole square. 
okay now to find the maximum here okay so we you need to add so you say this is a function g and if you perform the derivatives so what you will get is you can show that so if you let's say g of x is x minus a whole square into x minus b whole square then if you uh, can show that g dash of x is equals to whole time x minus a into x minus b into x minus a plus b by 2. So you will get the three critical points here a, b and a plus b by 2 and see the value where it gets maximum. Okay, and so it will be going to be at the point because at x equals to a, the value is 0. At x equals to b, the value is 0. So only the point a plus b by 2. And if you substitute here, so you will get the maximum of this here. So that is going to be some b minus. So here, so if you replace a plus b by 2 minus a, that is b minus a by 2. So b minus a by 2 whole square into b minus a by 2 whole square that is b minus a by 2 to the power 4 okay so this will implies so this certainly implies certainly implies norm of this infinity now is going to be less than equals to the infinity norm of fourth derivative divided by 4 factorial Time the maximum of gx is b minus a by 2 to the power 4. So this is what you have done for means like on the interval a b. Now what you can do is you can subdivide the interval into n equal subparts and at each interval you talk about cubic Hermite interpolation and then you we will design a piecewise cubic Hermite interpolated polynomial. Okay, so let's first do the example here. Okay, so let's do one example here. So let us have the function is non. Okay, so let's given by x power 4 plus x cube plus x square plus x plus 1. So whose derivative also you can evaluate that is very simple that is equals to 4x cube plus 3x square plus 2x plus 1 right okay so now this is x f so so here let's choose the interval 0 and 1 so a b a equal to 0 and b equals to 1 so 0 0 1 1 so f values at 0 is z, uh, 1 f value at 0 is 1 f at value 1 is 1 2 3 4 5 5 2, 5 now first column so here what will be the value value f dash at 0 so f dash at 0 value is 1 and what is the value at here is f dash at 1. So what will be the f dash value at 1 is 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 3 is 10. What will be the value here is 5 minus 1 by 1 minus 0. So that is 4. Now the next here is 4 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 0. So that is 3. So here is 10 minus 4 that is 6 divided by 1 minus 0. So that is The third, they are divided difference is 6 minus 3 divided by 1 minus 0. So that is. So values are here. And what will be the interpolating polynomial here? So Hermite, the cubic inter Hermite interpolating polynomial is equals to this is f at 0, that is 1 plus f dash at a that is 1 time x minus a a is 0 plus second divided difference that is 3 
time x minus 0 into x minus 0. So x minus a whole square, so in other words, plus 3 into, so x minus a whole square, so that is x square, time x minus b, so x minus 1. So what is this is 1 plus x plus 3x square plus 3x cube minus 3x square. So if you simplify it, so what you will get is 1 plus x plus 3x. Now let us add one more point here. Okay, let us add one more point here. So what you will get, so here, so see, here we are getting, we have derived the cubic hermite polynomial and F is a four degree polynomial. So let us add one more point here. So let's add the value at two. And if you see the value at two is uh, uh, two to the power four, 16 plus eight plus four plus two plus one. Is uh, 24, 28, 331. So, what will be the here value is 31 minus 5 is 26, 26 minus 10 is uh, 16, and this is going to be 16 minus uh, 6 is 5, right? Okay because 2 uh, minus 1 here, right? Okay, for this 2 minus 1, for this 2 minus 1, so 16 minus 6 is 10, 10 by 2 minus 0, that is this here, and here is 5 minus 3 is 2, divided by 2 minus 0 is. Now, the next polynomial can be obtained by using this, okay, so pre cubic polynomial. So, if you derive what will be the interpolating polynomial is P4 of x, if you look at, that is going to be P3 of x plus difference 1 into x minus uh, x0, x minus x minus x1, x minus x2 into x minus x3. So, x square into x minus 1 whole square. So that is x square into x minus 1 whole square. And if you simplify it, so p3x is 1 plus x plus 3x cube. And this is going to be x square into x square minus 2x plus 1. And if you simplify it, it is x of 4. So minus uh, 2x cube plus 3x cube, so plus x cube plus x square plus x plus 1. And you are getting back the function itself. Okay, right. So also now, okay. So this is uh, this is about the cubic hermite interpolating polynomial. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to now use this for defining the piecewise cubic hermite interpolation. Okay. So like we have done for previous okay for linear interpolating polynomial or quadratic interpolating polynomial. Similarly, we will proceed here. Okay, right. So, uh, here now, what we are going to do, let's start with the fresh base. So, uh, piecewise cubic hermite interpolating polynomial. Now it will be easy for getting the cubic hermite interpolating polynomial in piecewise structure. Okay. 
so as previously so we have the real valued function and uh, f is differentiable okay and we wish to get the uh, uh, piecewise cubic hermite interpolation right so what we are going to do is we are going to make a uniform partition so a equals to x naught less than x1 less than x2 and so on less than xn equals to d and how they are xi's are related so xi is equals to a plus i h what is h is b minus a by n okay now what we are trying to get is we are trying to get the cubic hermite interpolation at each interval so now so you have here x naught x1 x2 and so on this is xn minus 1 this is xn so at each interval you are trying to look at the cubic hermite interpolation and you are joining these two polynomial with the uh, yeah, with the assumption that you are making them as continuously differentiable okay right so so if i recall the space what it will be here xn if i recall what you require is the interpolating polynomial g is c1 on the close interval a b over r okay that such that where g is such that g is an interpolating polynomial g restricted over the interval xi to xi plus 1 is a polynomial of degree less than equals to 3 so what will be the dimension here so dimension of xn what it will be assume the c1 okay so then so uh, so you have the uh, when you don't have any assumptions you have four arbitrary member in also right you have one comma right basis for each uh, for each interval you have four number of arbitrary constants so a not a1 a2 a3 okay so how many in the total number is total are n number of polynomials so you have four n now you are imposing the conditions at the interior points they are n minus 1 in numbers what you require is continuously differentiable so you require at these points continuity as well as the derivative also differentiability as well so two times n minus 1 so if you uh, 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 conclude this that is going to be 2n plus 2 so to get the uniqueness of the interpolating polynomial, we need to specify 2n plus 2 conditions. Okay, so we need to specify the 2n plus 2 conditions. So, therefore, now here is the way. So, let's say, uh, so we are having let f is a b to r and g n is belonging to x n such that gn at ti or xi is equals to f at xi. So these values are known. So i equals to 0, 1, 2 and so on n. And another uh, n plus 1 conditions are gn dash at xi is equals to f dash at xi. So, you know both things. So, function values at the nodal points as well as at the, it, uh, and also that its derivative values for them. So, i equals to 0, 1, 2, n. So, if you know these two things, okay, so you have total n plus, uh, n plus 1 conditions here, n plus 1 conditions here. So, 2n plus 2. So, you will determine the, you will be able to determine gn uniquely. And how this uh, gn uh, will be defined, like we have done on so on interval xi to xi plus one. So like we have defined for a to b. So what is gn of x is equals to gn at xi plus g 
tn dash at xi time x minus xi plus gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 time x minus xi whole square. So we have replaced xi by a and xi plus 1 by b there. Okay. So nothing new here. So only the notations are changing now. So the last term is gn at xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1 time x minus xi whole square time x minus xi plus 1. Okay, and what will be the error here? Error will be f of x minus gn of x. What will be the error was? That is uh, some uh, gn or you can say uh, gn or f. They, they, this, they are, these are going to be, you are, getting, you are going to get it from the divided difference table only. So that is going to be f xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1 comma x time x minus xi whole square time x minus xi plus 1 whole square. And if you assume that f is four time differentiable, so uh, you have assumed that f is four time differentiable. on close interval a b so because you require for each i so what it will be is you can uh, you have the error term okay so error on x i to x i plus 1 interval will be will be uh, so that is again f minus gn of x is equals to. So if you have four times differentiability, this divided difference can be replaced by fourth derivative divided by four factorial. So f fourth derivative at some cx, cx lies between xi to xi plus one, four factorial time this x minus xi square type x minus xi plus one whole square. Now you can get the bound. So bound of error, bound of error. What it will be is going to be, uh, you can say maximum over x belongs to xi comma xi plus one mod of f of x minus gn of x. So like we have done for in the linear and quadratic case, similarly we are proceeding for the norm. Going to be less than equals to, so cx lies between xi to xi plus 1, so maximum over fourth derivative over this interval. So but since this is the, this is the sub interval of the, so the uh, larger interval is a to b that's overall interval the way it lies so instead of taking on or only on x i to x i plus one we can take it bound over the close interval a b right so it's because supremum or maximum function is an increasing function here in the magnitude right okay so you have this is uh, going to be uh, a norm fourth derivative Infinity norm. So, where does mean what is the meaning of infinity norm? So, now f fourth derivative maximum is going to be the uh, the uh, maximum of fourth derivative over the whole interval x or closed interval a b four factorial time maximum of this. So, just now uh, we uh, have done for x minus a whole square time x minus b whole square. So, similar fashion you can. Show for it. So what will what was the maximum is in magnitude is b minus a by 2 whole scale. So b minus a is what xy plus 1 minus xi. So that is going to be xi plus 1 minus xi by 2 square into square is for 4. So xi plus 1 minus xi is h, right? So this is going to be less than equals to f fourth derivative 
means infinity norm of fourth derivative divided by 20 power 24 into 16. Three eighty four time s to the power four. Right? And what is h is b minus a by n. So let's so now see right side is completely independent of over i. So this is true for each i. Okay. So you can take the maximum over it and then you will get the global error. You can say this is a localized error, and this then you can make it global. So this will be, this implies you further take the maximum over i. So what you will get is norm of f minus g n. So infinity norm is going to be less than equals to infinity norm of fourth derivative divided by 384 times s to the power 4. And since h equals to b minus a by n, so this tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So convergence is guaranteed. And it is again much faster than the linear and quadratic linear and quadratic inter piecewise interpolation. So now, so this is all done for piecewise cubic harmonic interpolating polynomial. Now, see what is the drawback here in the piecewise cubic harmonic interpolating polynomial is that you require the values of the function values at the, de the derivative at its um, uh, uh, you require the uh, values uh, of its derivative at the at the nodal points so you require f dash of pi for cubic uh, harmonic interpolating polynomial but it should it, it will not be possible for every data Okay, so there we will take the role for there. We, there, this cubic spline interpolation will take the role. Okay, so now the next what we are going to now deal with is cubic spline interpolation. So again, n n is same. Okay, aim is same to design a polynomial of interpolated polynomial of degree less than equals to 3. Okay, and if possible, we wish to have the interpolating polynomial to be C2, means this a continuously differentiable two times. Okay, and what in addition we require is the interpolating polynomial depends only at the nodal points means we don't require the uh, we we don't want to get the dependence on the derivative values okay because at the starting phase itself we should not have uh, we, we should not require the uh, the values of the function at its derivative okay so we wish to get rid of the derivatives so we will we don't want to depend on it okay so this is our goal for uh, here designing this cubic spline interpolation. Okay, so again we are going to uh, work with a uniform partition. Okay, so what is here is let's say uh, what uh, so you if you uh, want to so I have the f function from a b to r so real value uh, function. Okay, and we wish to interpolate this function. Okay, so let's say we are interested in the we are considering the space xn where g is the interpolating function or interpolating polynomial which interpolates f and which we require let's say c2 ab such that g restricted at xi to xi plus 1 is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3. So this is what we require. So now, if not, not that if you look at the dimension of this space, what will be the dimension that is equals to 4n is when you are not having any condition. But when you have continuously differentiable two times, 
so you are going to define three condition at each integer point so that is three time here so that is going to be n plus three so you so to determine this g uniquely you require n plus three conditions okay so that we should keep in mind so now let's say it at prior what we are aware as uh, okay let, what is given to us is g is a interpolating polynomial such that g at xi is equals to f at xi so what is i is i is from 0 1 2 and so on n and what are xi's are xi's are a plus ih h is equals to b minus a by n so n plus 1 conditions are given to us so you need to identify two more conditions if you define two more conditions you require two more conditions to get the uniqueness so that we will deal little later okay so let's first see how to construct such g okay how to construct such g that we need to now uh, look at okay now see we are going to use the previous knowledge okay so now in the previous knowledge what may, where we have applied the cubic hermite interpolating polynomial we required the derivative values now what we do is we keep them as arbitrary member okay. and then we try to determine them so now what is our uh, steps are here is so let's first we i just want to highlight here so we treat we will treat g and dash so i am talking about over the interval ti and ti to ti plus one so g and dash at ti and g and dash at ti plus one let's say are unknown are unknown then we use the fact that that's the first thing we should keep we should keep the second thing what we should keep is we use the fact we will use the fact that try to use the fact that gn is c2 two time differentiable okay and then try to see whether we will be able to determine this uh, gn dash at ti's or not so once we are able to do that then we are through okay right so if so i'm just going to now explain you a little more technically okay so here is this uh interval so let's say this is ti minus one this is ti and this is ti plus one so let's call this uh here is a polynomial as pi which is uh, gn restricted at the interval ti to ti plus 1 and here we have the notation pi minus 1 and uh, which is gn restricted at ti to uh, ti minus 1 to ti so what we require what we require the continuity and differentiability at ti okay so what how will we proceed now so let's let's write down what will be the expression for this pi and or pi minus 1 in general okay so now this pi will be given by so pi of x the simple simple similar formula what we are going to write here so that is gn at xi plus gn dash at xi time x minus xi plus gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 time x minus xi whole scale plus last of one gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1 time x minus xi whole square time x minus xi plus 1. So, if you try to uh, relate 
if you try to relate with the previous you have the formula same but here this gn dash is not given to us so this gn dash is not known to us okay so what you will do here is you require two times so two time differentiability means you require pi double dash at ti so what we require is pi double dash at ti so p derivative is only possible ti plus so left uh, right side right should be equals to pi minus 1 double dash at ti minus so this is the condition we will verify we are going to use the fact that gn in c2 means you can differentiate two times okay now so we need to match at these two ti plus uh, 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 right hand derivative and left hand derivatives are equal okay so if we are done with this then we are through okay now so let's determine what is pi dash of x so replacing i by i minus 1 here will give you pi minus 1x so there is nothing worry about it so pi dash if i wish to calculate that is going to be g n dash of x i plus 2 time g n x i comma x i comma x i plus 1 time x minus x i plus g n time g n of uh, the, the divided difference at x i comma x i plus 1 comma x i plus 1 the derivative of this product term is 2 times x minus x i into x minus x i plus 1 plus x minus x i whole square. Now, what is p i double dash at x? See, at x i, x i plus, if you take this p i dash at x i plus, you will not get anything. So, g n dash at x i you will get. So, that is the unknown. So, you, okay. So, we, we, we will not so that's why we are going with the second derivative here. So second derivative, if you go, so this is the constant because unknown, but it's a constant, right? So plus two, so equals to two times g n x i comma x i comma x i plus one. Okay, plus g n time. Uh, sorry, uh, this uh, divided difference g n x i comma x i. xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1 time so if you uh, differentiate again so that will be uh, this is 2 times x minus xi and this is uh, 4 times x minus xi plus 2 times x minus xi plus 1 if you simplify it now what will be pi double dash at ti plus okay so what will be it is the so first term is constant so that is two times uh, uh, the divided difference xi comma xi comma xi plus one plus so uh, sorry this is uh, xi plus okay here also uh, here is okay so we are talking about x i right? so here is uh, this is x i plus 1 so this is x i so these all are replaced by x okay now uh, this is implies so this x i plus so this term will not contribute anything what it will contribute is t i plus uh, sorry x i plus minus x i plus 1 so x i plus h you, you are going to replace how will you determine the limit h tends to 0 t i plus is replaced by t i plus h right so once you do go for it so it will give you so see x i minus x i x i plus 1 is minus h so this will be minus 2 h time g n x i comma x i comma x i plus comma x i plus 1 okay now 
let's uh, uh, write this in the next case. So what we have observed is pi double dash at uh, x i plus is equals to uh, two times g n x i comma x i comma x i plus one minus two h g n x i comma x i comma x i plus one comma x i plus one. So this is what we have got for x i plus. Now what is about p i double dash x i plus one minus. So at x i plus one minus. So first term remain as it is. So that is equals to two times g n x i comma x i comma x i plus one. And here it is when you go for x i plus one plus. So x i plus one minus. So this term will not contribute anything. That's zero. You will get h here. Okay. So that is going to be plus four h g n x i comma x i comma x i one comma x i plus one. Okay. Now we wish to further simplify the above. Now from here, what we uh, have, uh, this is going to be uh, replacing i by i minus one. So what we will get is, uh, we are going to simplify now. Because we wish to find the, we wish to determine the pi double dash at we wish to uh, equate these two equations so pi double dash xi plus is equals to pi minus 1 double dash xi minus okay so so similar fashion so pi double dash of x similarly i can write pi minus 1 double dash of x so so you are only talking about now xi minus 1 to xi interval. So you get is going to be 2 times gn. 2 times xi minus 1 comma xi minus 1 comma xi is equal to second term. So here, here you are going to replace i by i minus 1. So what it will be plus g n x i minus one comma x i minus one comma x i comma x i time four time x minus x i minus one plus time x minus x i. Right. Now from here you can also get that pi minus one double dash at xi minus. You can also get from here that is going to be two times gn xi minus one comma xi minus one comma plus for xi minus contribute. This does not contribute anything. So you will have. Uh, here for h g n x i minus 1 comma x i minus 1 comma x i comma x i. Okay. Now what you wish to now do is you need to equate this to p i minus 1 double dash x i minus is equals to p i double dash x i plus for getting the differentiability, right? So what you will get now is, so from above, what you will have now, pi double dash xi plus. So I'm going to simplify more now. So now are the only technical things now. So that is, uh, I'm just going to do gn 
xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 2h gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1. So first I am going to simplify the this third order divided difference. Okay. And so what it will be that is equals to 2 times gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 minus 2 times. So h is there. So h I can adjust with this because xi plus 1 minus xi will be in the denominator or you can let, make it later on. So if you use that uh, the definition that is equals to gn xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1 minus gn of xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 divide by xi plus 1 minus xi. So this xi plus 1 minus xi will get cancelled with this h. So this will be equals to now, now this is gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 here also with plus 2. So it is going to be 4 times gn xi comma xi comma xi plus 1 minus 2 times gn xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1. So we are only simplifying this now divided differences opening up. Okay. Now, this is going to be 4 times. Now use the definition here. Now 4 by h. So gn xi comma xi plus 1. Minus gn xi comma xi. That is going to be. We are known that this is a differentiable. That is replaced by gn dash of xi. Minus 2 by h. Times gn of xi comma xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1. So this is going to be, if you use the divided difference uh, relation, that is going to be higher order divided differences. So gn xi plus 1 comma xi plus 1, that is gn dash at xi plus 1 minus gn xi comma xi plus 1. This is just simplifying it. We are just simplifying it. Now, if you further, so this is going to be, uh, this is uh, here is uh, x equal to, uh, this is 4 by h gn, this is minus minus plus 2 by h, so 6 by h, so h is uh, denominator is there, so h so you have 6 times gn xi comma xi plus 1 minus 4 times gn dash at xi minus 2 times gn dash at xi plus 1. So this is going to be pi double dash xi plus. Now still you can simplify it gn of xi comma xi plus that we are going to later on. We are going to do now. Okay. Similarly, now we are going to uh, simplify that pi minus 1 double dash at xi minus. Okay. So that's we are going to do now. Now, pi minus 1 double dash at xi minus. If you recall, was that is pi minus 1 double dash xi minus was that 2 gn. So that is equals to 2 gn xi minus 1 xi minus 1 comma xi plus 4 h gn xi minus 1 comma xi minus 4 comma xi comma xi. Okay, right. So now you just simplify it again. Now this is going to be, so uh, this is uh, 2 times gn in the similar way you have to uh, going to open it. 
xi minus 1 comma xi plus 4h now use the uh, uh, definition so that is going to be gn xi minus 1 comma xi comma xi minus gn xi minus 1 comma xi minus 1 comma xi divide by xi minus xi minus 1 so this is going to be h that is going to be cancer again so this is going to be uh, 4 uh, 4 plus 2 is 6 right uh, 6 this is going to be uh, here uh, minus 4 here and plus 2 so minus 2 so 4 g n 4 g n x i minus 1 comma x i minus 1 comma x i plus 4 times g n x i minus 1 comma x i comma x is minus 2 g n here so it is going to be minus 2 by h now g n x i minus 1 comma x i minus g n x i minus 1 comma x i minus 1 that is g n dash at x i minus 1 okay similarly this is the second term 4 by h g n of x i minus 1 comma x i x i minus uh, g n of x i comma x i so minus g n dash at x i right so this is two first here is minus this is plus because g n of x i comma x i minus g n of x i minus or comma x i yeah so now if you take the l here it's a little complicated here so h and uh, this is going to be minus 6 g n x i minus 1 comma x i okay plus uh, uh, this is uh, minus yeah plus 4 times g n dash at x i plus 2 times g n dash at x i minus 1 right so now we are in the position of equating both sides okay right so now once you equate the both side so the right side is i'm just going to write in the denominator now here is equals to minus 6 g n x i comma x i this is x i minus comma x i so x i minus 1 comma x i plus 4 times g n dash at x i plus 2 times g n dash at x i minus 1 divided by h. Now h will get cancelled and if you arrange all the terms what you will get is 2 times g n dash at x i minus 1. So I am sending uh, the, this term to this side and uh, I am just uh, rearranging the terms you can say uh, that uh, plus 8 times g n dash at x i plus 2 times g n dash at x i plus 1. That is equals to uh, uh, this term is this side, so this term goes to this side. So six times g n x i comma x i plus one plus g n x i minus one comma x i. You rearrange the things here. Now you have this uh, two. You can take common and you can do this. I can simplify. And now further simplify this uh, divided differences. So what you get is, so this implies g dash at x i minus 1 
plus four times uh, g n dash at x i plus g n dash at x i minus one is equals to three times. So x i plus one plus g n of x i minus one comma x i. So here uh, one by h is there. So x i plus one minus x i when you open it up. So one by h is out. So three by h. So for one up, so that is going to be g n of x i plus one minus g of x i g n. The second term plus g n of x i minus g n of x i minus one. So this term get cancelled. So what you will get is three times x i plus one minus g n of x i minus one divide by. And for the c, these values you know. These are going plus one minus f i minus one divided by h. So h is non three the number base. And uh, these values are non prior. So now these are equations. So here is equals to one two. So here i plus one. So i uh, one two minus one. So these are n minus one equations, but n plus one unknowns. So you have unknowns are so unknowns are dash at ti. So these are n plus one unknowns. And you have equations n minus one. So you require to fix two unknowns uh, value, right? You require the at the starting you have to uh, you have to require and condition. So generally, uh, generally uh, uh, and conditions are defined like you are at prior you know what are the values at derivative. So g dash you can say so and conditions are now we are going to define so. And conditions is going to be uh, let's say g dash of a is equals to f of a and uh, f dash of a and g dash at b is equals to f dash at b. Suppose these two things are known to us. Okay. Suppose these two things are known to us. So what you can do? Then you can so then the original system now so you have at t not value and t n value so on so you have only n plus one unknown uh, sorry n minus one only unknowns are remaining now okay and you have and if you write it into the equivalent system of linear equations so it will be uh, is a tri diagonal system is going to be as four one one four one one four one and so on this will be four this will be one and it will be one here and these are below zeros so you can write them okay g and dash at t1 2 g and dash at tn minus 1 that is equals to equals to beta 1 minus f dash at a beta 2 and so on beta n minus 2 beta n minus 1 minus f dash at b what are these beta is are beta nothing but these values so this we are going to get this is beta so for i is equal to 1 okay for i equals to 1 what will be the equation if you verify so g n dash at x naught that is g n dash at a what is this is f at a and so beta 1 minus f of a and you have 4 times g n dash at uh, 1 and uh, g, uh, uh, g n dash at x2 so these are x1 x2 so, so these are x1 to x n minus 1 
Oh, so the first equation when you put i equals to one, you will get the four times g n dash at x one plus g n dash at x two is equals to beta one minus f dash at a. So this is with the first equation from here. For the second equation, when you have i equals to two, so you have here x one, x two, x three. So all things are unknown to you. Okay. So you have one, four, one. Coefficients are four. Uh, x1 x2 and x3 so 1 4 1 here and so on okay in the next equation if you have i equal 3 you have here x2 x3 x4 okay so x1 is 0 so that's why here is 0 here you are starting then 1 4 1 and so on so that you can write in the form of system of linear equations Okay, and that you can be solved by using tridiagonal system Thomas algorithm that you have learned in during your system of linear equation session. Okay, so once if you uh, mention the end conditions like this, then you will have this you call that complete cubic spline interpolation. Okay, so that we will call as complete cubic spline interpolation, and where the derivative unknown now can be determined. So C unknown is uniquely determined. Why? Because this matrix is now coefficient matrix is a diagonally dominant matrix. Okay. And diagonally dominant matrix is an invertible matrix. Okay. So that is a very well known result that diagonally dominant matrix is an invertible matrix. So you can invert it. So it's the so this, this matrix is inverse. So it has a unique solution. Okay, so there is no uh, point of talking like uh, okay whether this has a solution or not. This always have a unique solution because the diagonal dominates them. Okay, so one more other conditions are there. So here in this in this uh, uh, in this cube complete cubic spline so uh, interpolation the error term also can be determined by the so because we have not defined new interpolating polynomial we only use the similar formula as like for as like for Hermite interpolating polynomial. So error term will remain globally the same only. So you will not, that will not be changing. Okay, right. So, yeah, so one question is there. So let me see. Uh, why do we have beta minus f dash of a? Uh, so this first equation, if you look, so because we are uh, having, uh, we are defining uh, end condition now. Okay. So we are defining end conditions as uh, g dash of a is equals to f dash of a means g dash at t naught uh, sorry x naught is equals to f dash of a and g dash at uh, uh, x n is equals to f dash at b. So that we are defining now end condition. Now if you look at the first equation to 1. So, what will be the equation is, I am just writing for case i equals to 1, is g n dash at x naught plus 4 times g n dash at x 1 plus g n dash at x 2 is equals to 3 times f 1 minus, uh, sorry, f 2, f 2 minus f naught divided by h am i right yeah so i equals to what's f2 minus f naught by h and here is gn dash at x naught plus gn dash at x2 and gn dash at uh, gn dash at x1 and gn dash at x2 okay. now right so now this is there so but now this is known to us okay that we have defined as f dash at a so this implies four times gn dash at x1 plus g n dash at x2 is equals to, so this we are calling as beta, okay, so beta 1, we are calling this as beta 1 minus g n dash at x naught, but that is g n dash at is f, at, f dash at a, dash at a. Now, if you go for i equals to 2, for case i equals to 2, so you have the equation like g n dash at x1 plus 4 times gn dash at x2 plus gn dash at x3 is equals to beta 2. 
that is the second row if 1 into g n dash at x1 plus 4 times g n dash at x2 plus uh, g n dash at x3 is equals to beta 2. Okay. Now, similarly for the and so on. For i is equals to n minus 1 now. So, the last case also need to be discussed. So, for n i equals to n minus 1. So, that is g n dash at x n minus 2 plus 4 times g n dash at x n minus 1 plus g n dash at x n is equals to beta n minus 1. Now, see, g n dash at x n is known to us. Okay, that is f dash at b. That is, uh, we are defining, okay, we are assigning the value g so that is, uh, we are giving the value that g n dash at x n, we are fixing at f dash at b and that is also priorly known. So that's what here. So one comma four for the coefficient x at x n minus two and x n minus one that equals to beta n minus one minus f dash. N. So this is what the next this last equation. So one times g n dash at x n minus two plus four times g n dash at x n minus one equals to beta n minus one minus f dash. N. So this is the last equation. Okay, so this so cubic spline interpolation when you talk about so particularly the problem will be reduced into solving the system of linear equation. Okay, which will be solved by using the Thomas algorithms. We have seen here uh, one application for Thomas algorithm. One more. Okay, and once you have once you use these uh, uh, as and conditions. Okay, then we have the complete cubic spline interpolation because everything is known to you. Now you can go back and fix everything. So everything is in now known thing. So you, you are no more depending on the derivative values. Only you need to uh, have a prior the derivative values at the left end point and right end point means the extreme end and you can say extreme uh, extreme ends. Okay, at the starting and at the ending point. Okay, so this is uh, here uh, g n dash. Okay, so here also you can prove that you can also the error, infinity error. So though this you can verify that norm of f minus g n infinity is going to be the constant time s to the power 4. Okay, so constant is now this, this constant is a fourth infinity for uh, norm of fourth derivative divided by four factorial time two to the power four. That's uh, we have uh, seen already in the cubic Hermite interpolating polynomial. So in a similar way, you can also verify this. Sometimes people also have used uh, the other type of end conditions which are given by, so which are also known as natural end conditions. Okay, so uh, that is also, um, that is why it is called natural because it is come uh, naturally when you are taking the optimization problem. Okay, so we are not going into depth of it. So natural end conditions are second derivative at a is zero and at end points we are assigning that that the, the second derivative at both end points a and b are vanishing so these these two equations so when you such means what g n double dash at uh, t not uh, sorry x not plus is equals to zero and g n double dash at x n minus equals to zero this is what it means. Okay, and so you are going to work with so this this will lead to so p naught of x naught plus equals to zero. And if I'm going with the notations, and this will work with a p n uh, minus one at x n minus is going to be equals to zero. So see why it is here x naught plus and x n minus because because you have you are starting with x naught and you are ending with x n. So you don't bother what happened after x n and before x naught. Okay. So this is why you are only talking about x naught plus and x n minus at that differential. So this is double dash. So these also will lead to two more equations, means two more conditions 
and that will give you one more solution. So that will give you those unknowns. Okay, but in this case, what will happen is, uh, in this case, in this, uh, uh, you have, you don't have the order of convergence as to the power four. You will have here, the order of convergence is h square, which is same as the linear interpolation. Okay, which is same as the piecewise linear interpolating uh, for the case when you are considering piecewise linear interpolating polynomial. So when you have the same order of convergence, so you don't want to compromise here. So because here, so uh, because uh, uh, because constructing cubic interpolating polynomial is tough than the constructing the linear interpolating polynomial. So if you are getting both. Uh, in the both cases, h square only, the, the bound is with h square only, so you better will go with the linear interpolating, piecewise linear interpolating polynomial. But uh, the case, uh, when you wish to have both things, means like you wish to have h to the power 4, you wish to go for c2, and you wish to also add natural and con conditions, so then, then you may require new conditions. That is a uh, 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 that is a uh, uh, you can say that we can uh, uh, leave it at this uh, stage for that part. So we are concluding here. So with the natural and conditions, that uh, the error of uh, the order of convergence will uh, get back to h square only, with as like as for linear interpolation. Okay. So we are going to add with the conditions. So like. So, for getting the h to the power 4, we should have at prior f dash at a and f dash at b, and we are interpolating those values as well in the interpolating polynomial. Okay, right. So, here uh, the interpolation topic is, I think, completed. Now, uh, afterwards, I mean, now from the next lecture onwards, we are going to start the numerical differentiation and integration using first we will use try to use the uh, the interpolation technique and then we will try to uh, go further okay yeah okay then thank you